All right, Jay here, we're back with our YZ250 build. This thing's running really well. We got it jetted in and it's time to get some wheels built. We got Faster USA gonna build us some wheels after we get the stock hub Cerakoted. We got Sano Metal finishing gonna help us with that. And we put some new bearings in these things and we'll get them built. You can check it out right now. Okay, so we start off obviously kicking our wheels off here. We're gonna take the tires off and rotors and all that. Uh, heat's always good to have on your sprocket on these disc bolts and then they'll usually come off with some old Loctite. Gonna get these disassembled. Of course, we're gonna use new bolts. We got some new bolts from Spec Bolt when we reassemble, and we have new rotors from Galfer that we'll put on. Of course, taking tires off is easy for me, no problem. Um, just pull, pull them off. We're not gonna use any of this stuff, but we had used tires on here for when we jetted it in and uh, broke it in. Um, we cut off the spokes. Um, you can use uh, cutters. Uh, bolt cutters if you want, uh, a grinder's kind of just a lot cooler. And it sounds like a two-stroke, so that makes it kind of cool. Uh, you want to be careful when you're doing this, but the, and if you're going to ship your hubs off to anybody to get the wheels built, you'll want to do this. Just get them, you know, cut them off, and you can ship the hub to them, and then they'll be able to build your wheel complete. Same thing with sprocket bolts. We do sprocket bolts with two people. Um, just real simple way to just do it here on my tire stand. And for those that don't remember, uh, if you email us, we will send you a tire stand uh, drawing. So you can make your own, or if you got an uncle or brother or friend of me that will make you one that welds, you can uh, make up a tire stand. They're really useful, even for just doing you know sprockets and rotors, and of course for doing tire changes, obviously. So same thing here, heat up those bolts and then you can just uh, break that Loctite loose. All right, so we got the hubs off. Let's check this out, Donnie. So we're, now we're gonna get these bearings out. We gotta get the bearings out so that we can get these, these hubs treated. We're gonna get them uh, vapor blasted. There's all kinds of things, we're gonna get them Cerakoted when we're done. So this one has some snap ring pliers holding on one side. So I'm gonna, I'll grab those. Austin, you still have some snap ring pliers out there? Uh, no. Okay. Now here, they have, there's a spacer inside of your hub. And I just, and then you bounce to the other side. It sounds like I might be all the way out. Look at that, that was one bearing out and that's the spacer. We gotta keep that. Um, and then to knock the other side out, there's a couple different ways you could do it. If we kind of know what size, looks like about this size one will work. And I got this cool Motion Pro, what do we call this thing? Whacking stick? H hammer. Yeah. So we can... Driver. <laughs> driver. Uh, it doesn't fit through. So then you have to put a smaller one to go through because the hub has a different diameter right here than it does down at that bearing, so. I've used sockets for years. Yeah. We know sockets aren't just used for sockets every day. Right. Okay, so now I'm kind of lined up there. And that's as easy as it is. Now this thing, see it's got some Texas dirt on there still, some red dirt. Now this thing's ready to go over to Sano for, for some finishing there. Now I'm gonna get this snap ring out first. We're good. So that took like, uh, what, five minutes longer than it should have. So that's a tough booger. So we tried like three different, uh, Doing jickies and then Donnie got in there and he gave me a hand. So now we're gonna do the same thing. Um, with the punch, you wanna, first thing I do is go just like halfway down, kind of knocking this, this collar, like this, this collar right here. I'm knocking it down so that I have room to get down there to the bearing. And now I hit the bearing, I can tap it from side to side. Hey, talk about your little crate that you have made here. Oh, this is just a little engine stand. And so they're kind of useful for stuff like this as well. 
I've had this there like 30 years or something. Okay. So my, now I've got that spacer really knocked over and I got a pretty good lip right here. So I'm going to come around here to where that good lip is and I can go like, and now I'm going to, don't want to go too much on one side. So now I'm going to flip it over to the other side. So it comes out somewhat even. Now flip back over to the other side. Kapoom out. And so what you risk is you don't want the thing coming out too much sideways. You can break off an edge of the, the casting here. And there's our spacer. So we'll set those right there. And now let's see what we want to send through here for this. Again, these aren't in there that tight to where even like this, this rod is fine. Make sure I'm on there good. You don't want to hit the casting of the, the hub. Okay, so that's all there is to it right there. Boom. So we got our hubs back from Cerakote, uh, Sandal Metal Finishing and Marietta, California code our hubs for us. Heat is the key for getting bearings started. We have our bearings in the freezer. They'll just tap right in if you have the right apparatus. If you have an Arbor Press, they're great. I want to show just using them with manual hand tools to get those in and of course don't forget the spacer that goes in between some guys will actually forget to put that in thanks for watching the video so far don't forget if you're going to shop for new parts for your dirt bike at rockymountainatvmc.com to click on the link in our description below
Onyx Off-Road. Nowhere to go with the number one GPS app. Access 500,000 miles of trails and roads. Open dates and public lands. The Elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the Onyx Off-Road app. To save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.